Hey guys, welcome to Pearls of Eden. Today, I have a word from you that will come from Job's 42 and the book of Psalms. This morning, I was like, Lord, I need a word from you. What is it that you want to tell me? And I encourage you, you know, when you get in the word of God, pray before you open your Bible and ask the Lord to guide you to a word that is something that he wants to personally tell you and share and reveal to you for that particular moment. And it's so powerful because you got to remember, guys, this is a living book. It is filled with the word who is Jesus Christ. And a lot of people try to go to so many other things. They try to do self-help books. They try to go to Google. They try to go to friends. But who is the best counselor? Who is it that is the alpha and the omega? Who is it that knows all? Who is it that is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent? Jesus Christ. So as I dive into this word, Lord, I pray that I would decrease so that your spirit can increase. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. Lord, have your way. In Jesus name, I pray. I thank you. Amen. This book, guys, Job 42, the revelation that the Lord gave me this morning is powerful because I have never looked at it this way. And this is why you have to read the Bible over and over. It is your lifeline because it's a seven layer cake. In one season, the Lord will reveal this. In another season, he'll show you more. And you're just building and growing from glory to glory. I love the book of God. So let's jump in. I'm going to be reading from Job 42 verse 12. And this is the word that the Lord placed on my heart that many of you, maybe your, your beginnings were meek. Maybe your beginnings were not that great. Maybe you had a horrible childhood. Maybe it was okay. Maybe it wasn't that bad, but it just wasn't the best. And in this season, going toward your ladder, going toward the final stages, going toward the end of your life, it's going to be better. So be of good cheer, be encouraged. Even though you may have not gotten off to the best start, maybe you've gone through some tough trials and tests like Job did. Job lost almost everything, but God restored him double fold. And do you all remember I said coming into 2022, this is a season of double plus for many of us. It's more than the double. God is so gracious. And I want to read to you because it's more confirmation about the double fold blessing and that I don't want you to dis be discouraged if your beginnings were not what you had hoped. Maybe you just had a lot of valleys, a lot of lows. Be of good courage. The end is not yet. Keep working, keep seeking, keep asking, keep knocking. God is faithful. So it said, the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemaniah, Jemiah, I'm sorry, the second Keziah, and the third Kernin Hapu. Nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters. And their father granted them an inheritance along with their brother, their brothers. I'm going to stop right there because this is what the Lord placed on my heart. You know, the beauty of the Lord makes one so graceful and so elegant. The beauty of the Lord does not fade. But, you know, when you look up to people like Beyonce and J-Lo, they're great, right? They're beautiful on the outside, sure. But the Bible says that nowhere in the land were their daughters as beautiful as Job. And what he spoke to me is that nowhere in the land is there more beautiful than a God-fearing woman. Oh, no. You can paint the outside, you can do all these things, but the beauty that is inside, the living God that is within her, that causes her not to fail, but to try up so that she does not fail. There is no one more beautiful than a woman that fears the Lord. Guys, young men, 
Find you a woman of God because she will not only have the beauty that is a countenance that will glow from the inside out, but the beauty that is within her, it will not fade. But like Sarah, she will become more beautiful even in old age. Hallelujah. Do you all receive that, my women of God? That even as we grow older, we just grow more beautiful because we radiate with his presence. Hallelujah. But I also love, and this is what the Lord pointed out to me, that they received an inheritance just as their brothers. See, it was not so in those days. In those days, the sons would get the inheritance. But he said, no, the king is saying, my daughters have inheritance in this kingdom. Daughters of Zion, arise. You know, I feel like the Lord just keeps pulling on me to talk to the women and talk about Deborah and Jael and Esther and to just keep encouraging you by showing you and sharing stories of strong women in the Bible because this is a season where the daughters of Zion, like I said, the Esthers, the Deborahs, the Jaels, we are arising for our God. And I just love that, that we understand that as daughters of Zion, we have an inheritance in our king, in our father's kingdom. Hallelujah. And it says, after this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children into the fourth generation. And so Job died an old man and full of years. And so I prophesy a blessing into our lives that we will live to old age to see not only our children's children, but their generation prosper. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to see your children prosper. Not many people get to do that. And so we have to recognize what a blessing that is to be able to see up into the fourth generation. My God, what a blessing. The other thing the Lord wanted me to talk to you all about is part of Psalms book one. And yesterday I talked about how though your enemies may come against you, though people may try to destroy the plan of the Lord, they cannot. When the door is open for you to walk through, no one can stop your elevation. No Haman, um, no uh, authority from hell, no one. And we're in a season where the nets that were set for God's children, they are falling into it themselves. Now, keep in mind, when I was showing you the story about, um, what was it, Ezra chapter four, where there was opposition to the Israelites rebuilding the walls in the city, the restoration that was happening into their life and how these wicked officials, at one point, they were asking to work with the Israelites, but they said, no, I can't build with you because basically these Benjamites were serving God, but they also had idolatries in their life. They had mixed multitudes of idolatry. They were worshiping God, you know, lukewarmly. And they were called to worship God in spirit and truth. They were doing their best to walk with God in a way that was pleasing. So they couldn't walk in step with the wicked. And that's what the Lord connected for me to tell you all from Psalm book one. It says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step of the wicked. We are in a building season, my friends. We cannot build with everybody that says that they know God. Everyone that says, Lord, Lord, we have to test the fruit. We have to test the spirit and look at the fruit. I'm sorry. We have to have discernment because not everything that says, Lord, Lord, is after God's heart as we saw um, in Ezra chapter four, when these people wanted to build with the Israelites. Do you remember uh, the story of Joshua when the people disguised themselves as being poor and lowly and meekly and Joshua, because he did not ask God for discernment, he welcomed them in and they had to be his servant because they deceived him. They put on old raggedy clothes and shoes and, and old moldy bread so that they could get in the graces so that they could come into his camp. And see, we have people that pretend just like that to be believers, but they're not. They come dressed. They have all the actions. They have all the amens. But there's something that the Lord says, take another look. And what do you see? The Lord will reveal their hearts. He will give you discernment, but you've got to pray about everything. You can't welcome people to come build with you and you haven't sought the living God. And in this season, you have to be separate. You have to allow the Lord to separate you from anything that opposes the will of God. So you have to be prayerful about your relationships because not everybody that throws you a devotion not everybody that, you know, says that they're so, you know, Jesus, Jesus is really walking with him. 
And we are what? We are building. We have to know who we're building with because if you welcome the enemy in your camp and you welcome people into your intimate circle who really don't wish you well and you start beginning to telling them what you're doing and they begin to see what's going on in your life, they'll try to sabotage it just like those wicked men did to the Israelites. They tried to uh, sabotage the building, the restoration of Israel. So if you didn't watch that video, I pray that you go back because I uploaded a video that was very prophetic yesterday. And I believe that that word will be a blessing to many. Is it for everyone? No. Pray to God and ask him, is this word for me? You'll know if a word is for you because it will be simply confirmation. If it's not for you, it will not sit with your spirit. And that's a word for anything that you watch or hear. Make sure you run it by the living God. So I'm going to read Psalm 1, a part of it. It says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. You cannot walk in step with the wicked. That's why the Israelites could not walk with the Benjamites, even though that they were the tribes, you know, they claim to know God, one of the 12 tribes. They could not walk in step with the wicked because they were not truly honoring God in that season. And it says, are staying in the way that sinners take. You cannot afford to stand in the way the sinners take. You got to go a different way, a different road, a different path. Narrow is the path to life and wide is the path to destruction. You got to find the narrow path, people who are walking the narrow way. It says, are sick. Check this out. Or sit in the company of markers. You cannot afford to sit with slanderers and gossipers and people that claim to know the Lord. Well, what about her? What do you think about that? What do you think about him? I mean, do you think that he's really this or really that? Well, if you're so concerned, why aren't you taking that to the prayer closet before the Lord who can really give you the counsel that you need? You talking to your little group, your little small group about other people is not pleasing to God. So we have to not sit in the company of markers. And when we see people going down that road, the gossip, the slander, we got to change the subject. Why? Because we are the light. And if they continue, you got to just get up and go because we don't sit in the company of markers. And so that's why in this season, when God reveals to you certain things, you got to come away. You can't let people have a front row seat in your life and be so intimate in your circle. Because a lot of times when people see you building, they'll get jealous, envious. And just like those people that came against uh, the Israelites who were re being restored, who were rebuilding the wall, they'll try to sabotage you. They'll try to get other people to think, well, they ain't really all that. Let me tell you about their past, just like they did in Ezra 4. There is nothing new under the sun, nothing. But I love the word of God because it keeps us abreast. It keeps us wise. We have the wisdom of God to know how to operate, know how to talk, know how to be quiet, know how to whatever it is we need to know in that particular situation. He gives us the wisdom. Wisdom cannot be bought, but it is given by the living God. So we have to ask each day, God, give me an increasement of your wisdom so that I can operate and function within this day. Because you already know what's in this day, because you are the alpha and the omega amen all right so let me keep going it says don't sit in the company of markers but whose delight is in the law of the lord find you some people where they got a blessing on their lip find you some people where the delight of god the law and his ways are are what they talk about they delight in it. They're excited to get in the word of God. You send them a word, you got you an amen right away. They're like, praise God. They're excited to receive a word. I can never understand how you can send somebody the word of God and you cannot respond with an amen. Those are dry bones. Find yourself some people that got an amen in their spirit. Hallelujah. They got something to come back with you. They're like, let me tell you what's going on in my life. Let me testify. Let me glorify God. Praise God, girl. Let me tell you what's going on. Don't sit in the company of mockers and dry bones where their spirit, they ain't got no life for God in them. They got life for everything else. But they ain't got no life in them for God. They're, because why? Their delight is not in his law. But it says, those who meditate on the word of God day and night, we are the ones who are going to be planted like trees by the river. We will prosper. We will grow from glory to glory, faith to faith. Why? Because the river of life that flows through us, Christ Jesus, is our sustainer. So you got a lot of people that are walking in these falsehoods, okay? They want a little bit of God. They want a little bit of this. 
They want to, you know, they haven't allowed the word of God to be true and every man be a liar. And so they're walking in falsehood. And this is not the season. We are not walking hand in hand with Judas. We are not walking hand in hand with our enemy. Not in this season because we got to build. This is a building season. Hallelujah. So that's the word of the day. Go look at Job 42 verse 12 and Psalms 1. Powerful. And if you did not watch the video from yesterday, go and check it out. I know that it will bless you. It blessed me so much. And I thank God for his word. The word of God is a light in our spirit. And we're called to be a light, a beacon of hope, a beacon of kindness, a beacon of God's mercy, a beacon of grace, a beacon of just being the type of people that we're long suffering, even towards our enemies. We're kind, even if we got to feed them with a long handle spoon. We're still loving them. We're still praying for them. But it's just that in this season, we're not walking hand in hand. We can't afford to. We got to do God's will. We got to build. All right, guys, that is it for the day. Remember, you are the head, not the tail, above only, never beneath.